In this video, I'm going to give you a walk around of this beautiful six bedroom detached house conversion that we finished a few months ago. When we bought the house, we thought it would be a fairly simple three to four month conversion with things like redecoration, change of carpets and flooring and a very good clean. Unfortunately, the surveys that we had done on the house didn't pick up to quite the extent of the issues that the house actually had. You can see from these before and afters how different the master bathroom actually looks. I decided to put in a shower screen with an open end. What I'd forgotten is I'd ordered a shower with body jets. There was good pressure in the house, so it ended up that the water just sprayed off the end of the shower and right onto the floor. What we decided to do to solve this problem was put down a roll of waterproof flooring that can sometimes look tacky, but luckily we found this beautiful heron bone style that I thought really suited the bathroom. When choosing what colours to paint the walls, it actually became fairly difficult. I wanted to modernise the property while also keeping the traditional feel and character of the building. When the house was last renovated, the previous owners went for a gothic style, which was incredibly popular at the time, but this did tend to mean that all of the wall colours were much darker. I decided to go much brighter with my colour scheme, with a lot of heritage greys, whites and creams, that in my opinion makes things feel a lot more open and airy. It also makes a lot of rooms feel larger. The next room was an interesting one, only consisting of a single shower. During our project, it was known as the weird shower room or the shower in the tower. Before our conversion, this was the only shower in the building. The rest just had baths. I really liked the existing built-in wardrobes. So we cleaned them up, sanded them down and repainted them. One of the crazy things that we found were missing floor joists. We got in a structural engineer to see whether it was safe to leave and he said that if a few people jumped up and down, they could probably go through the floor. This was so frustrating to find out because our electricians had already finished the first fix and we had to get them back in to pull all of their cabling out so we could replace the joists. The left hand side of this house was built in the mid 1800s as a farmhouse whereas the right hand side was built by the previous owners in the late 1900s. This meant that the newer part had newer materials and the older part were built from things like lath and plaster, which is made from wooden battens and a type of plaster that contains real horsehair. The problem with this is that most of the walls have wallpaper on and when we tried to remove it with steamers and scrapers, big chunks came from the wall. After wasting way too much time, we decided to pull it all down and start afresh with plaster and plasterboard. Luckily, after putting up all of the plasterboard, we were able to plaster the entire left-hand side of the building within a couple of days. You can see that in this bathroom, I decided to go with some traditional features like the high-level toilet. This has a long pipe running all the way up to the cistern. Moving on from this, we decided to rent the property. Normally we would go for darker color carpets to hide stains that tenants would make, but in this circumstance we had to go for the lighter cream carpet. I chose the thickest underlay I could. In my opinion, even with the best carpets, if you don't have a good underlay, it's still going to be uncomfortable to walk on. One surprising thing about this property were the fairly low ceilings. It meant that I had to go with down lights for most of the bedrooms. From this clip you can see the many stains on the wall. The previous owners were heavy smokers and the light patches are where paintings were hung, protecting it from the nicotine. Here's a good example of one of the rooms that we had to remove all of the lath and plaster, taking it back to the external brickwork. This room had a beautiful bay window that I decided to utilize by putting in a window seat. Our decorators came up with a creative idea of painting the skirtings and the fireplace in a darker gray which I absolutely love. I'd love to know what all of you guys think about the choice of colors. I chose these modern and unique lights that believe it or not came from Wayfair, along with a number of other lights from the house. I've always been skeptical about ordering lights online, but was surprised that everything turned out really nicely. This room used to be the old kitchen that we ripped out and turned into a living room. We also added this brand new doorway into the main hallway. You can see that these doorways had the gothic style arch that I couldn't find anywhere. 
we had to get a carpenter to make one up specially along with the door. The downstairs bathroom was so odd because it had two separate doorways to get in. I obviously knocked one of these down. We added in some half height wall panelling that was painted in eggshell white with the top painted in Hague blue including the ceiling. In most of the rooms downstairs I decided to use a good quality candine in this dark wood. One thing I wasn't sure on at first was using column radiators in every single room. I'm so glad I did because it really adds to the aesthetic of the house. In this room, the main hall, I decided to go with full height wall panelling that I haven't really seen before, so was very nervous to see how it turned out. I think it helps to make it look like a grand entrance way. One thing I regret slightly was ordering this chandelier online as it wasn't put together when it arrived and it took us so many hours to hang each of the crystals individually. I decided to get rid of this tiny toilet and knock through under the staircase to make it into a utility room. Before we did this we had to get this huge safe out with a tractor that weighed more than a ton. I do think this is a much better use for the room and love the units and the Belfast sink that were installed. It was the only room that we could get away with having a low slope ceiling in. The final major issue that we ran into was that every single window was rotten and needed replacing. We got in a company to repair the windows but they priced themselves way too low and on the first day they did a bodge job. When we realised what they were doing they never showed up again. This room used to be a living room but I decided to change it into an open plan kitchen dining room. We opened up the fireplace and put a Smeg induction cooker in its place as there was no gas running to the property. We used Hague Blue again on one of the walls to match the kitchen island. I love the design of the kitchen and where the Belfast sink is located you can look through the window into the garden while you're washing up. Another issue we found was in the conservatory. A lot of the window panes are blown and needed replacing. We tried to get a company in to just replace the glass, but no one would install into the old conservatory frame. This meant that we had to take down the entire roof and a new firm came in and built their frame on top of the old one. One of the days that the roof was off, it rained so heavily that the wine cellar down those steps filled right up and we had to pump all of the water back out. Although it cost a lot of money and took a long time, the results were amazing. We also installed this beautiful chandelier. Our cleaners did an amazing job of bringing up all of the dirt from the original flagstone flooring. I have to thank each and every contractor that worked on the house. Without their expertise, we would have never got it finished. The final and oldest room in this house was the library, built in the 1800s as a cow shed. We chose an off-white for the walls and Hague blue for the bookshelves, skirtings and fireplace, also leaving the beams exposed. That pretty much wraps it up for the main house. Here are some photos we took when we hired a massive cherry picker to work on the roof and the upstairs windows. The right hand tower that you can see in the photo was the shower room that I showed you earlier in the video. The left hand tower was used as a storage room. Thankfully the roof was in very good condition as the tiles that we used were custom made making them incredibly expensive and hard to come by. Although the project took us 9 months and cost a lot more than we expected, I think it was worth every penny and I'm jealous of the people who are renting it. We added cast iron lanterns for security and extra light to the lovely patio. The house even came with 10 of its own peacocks and when you get over how noisy they are, they're actually very nice to have around. We painted all of the external woodwork in this farmhouse style green to freshen it all up. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button to let me know you want to see more videos. Also, any questions you might have, please leave them down in the comments section below. The gardens were a little overgrown, so the gardener worked overtime to bring it back to looking beautiful again. Before the tenants moved in, they asked us to convert the outbuilding into a home gym, so we freshened it up with some white paint and added some gym flooring. For everyone who's got this far, thank you so much for watching.